All right. Let's see, let's see. Who's, who's going to be the first to jump on now that we're streaming live from the page? Let's see. All right, give me a second. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today it's all about opportunities. We're talking about opportunities, how to recognize them and where to look, right? Critically important to know where to look for opportunities first and foremost, then how to recognize opportunities. And then if time permits, we'll talk about what to do with those opportunities when you see them, right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. You guys gotta help me, help me. <clears throat> Share the stream out. It's new for people to uh, be jumping on from the Financial Health Mentor page, but that's where the show will now live going forward. There's a lot of benefits to uh, operating from your fan page versus your personal profile page. And uh, it was just time to move the show on over there. So good morning, Jeffrey Parker. Good morning. Go ahead and share the stream for me if you haven't already. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and get started. I know uh, viewership may be down for a week or so until everybody recognizes that, hey, you got to go like the page. Um, and that's just kind of how it's going to be until we get things squared away. Crap, Ola. You mean to tell me that I don't have my table ready? Which means, oh, yes, I can. I can do it like this. I don't really have my um, my intro music on deck this morning, but then again I do because I'm an African engineer. It's all about being <laughs> having ingenuity. Jeffrey, good morning. Uh, Joseph, good morning. So give me a second and uh, to get my intro music queued up. And we're going to start the show, man. We're going to start this lit off right as we kick off the show on to uh, the Financial Health Mentor fan page here on Facebook. All right. There we go. All right. Huh. One of my devices wasn't charged all the way up. That's why we got no intro music. There we go, but I got it on now. It's being plugged in. All right, William, good morning. Go ahead and share the stream for me. Uh, like the page if you have uh, the Financial Health Mentor page. Do that for me. Uh, and then go ahead and share the stream out. As soon as I get this tablet to behave, There we go. Nope, it's just not going to act right for me this morning, people. But I didn't charge it up over the weekend. Crap, Ola. So today we start the show with no official intro or no uh, official theme music. So let me go ahead and get us rocking and rolling on Facebook. I mean, on YouTube as well as on Periscope. Monica, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Talking Money in the Morning Live with your main man, H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite 
fatherpreneur coming to you live and direct from the Monetize My Life Academy studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Guys, if you're not familiar with Monetize My Life Academy, it is a branding and marketing school for those who are building personal brands, whether you're a network marketer, affiliate marketer, uh, private coach, uh, fitness trainer. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. If you're trying to build a brand, then you need certain tools, you need certain resources, you need a certain amount of knowledge from a branding and marketing perspective to explode your brand and take it to another level. Monetize My Life Academy is a membership site that will give you all of those tools, resources, training, and education under a single umbrella. We're talking about education and training tools and resources from everything from SEO, uh, internet marketing, online marketing, uh, email marketing, uh, video marketing, how to use Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, all of those social media marketing outlets. We're talking about everything that you need. If you want to learn how to write a book, that course is coming uh, very, very soon. If you want to learn how to uh, uh, build a website, that, uh, that course already exists. If you want to learn how to blog and monetize your blog, monetize your website. All of that stuff exists right inside of the uh, Monetize My Life Academy. Craig, I don't know if you got a chance to go through some of the content uh, in, in Monetize My Life Academy. What did you see when you got out there for the first time, brother? Uh, if you got a chance to go in there and, and kind of poke around, we got the class in there on podcasting. I'm loading all of that stuff up uh, as we speak. There's already, I don't know, 10 hours of content in there already, and I'm loading new content every single day. Day. So if you want branding and marketing coaching uh, and you want a good place to find all of the things that you need to build a brand, especially if you're working online and make some extra streams of income, then monetizemylifeacademy.com is where you want to go. And go ahead and grab your free ebook, Easy Online Income, when you go to that site and enter your name and email address. Uh, <clears throat> today's show, we're talking about opportunity, man. Uh, you know, as you guys know that I don't watch a lot of TV but when I finally wind down for the end of the night, my wife usually cues up something on the fire stream uh, before we go to sleep. <clears throat> and last night it was power. And I heard Ghost say uh, something uh, very profound. He said, the only antidote for poverty is opportunity. He said, the only antidote for poverty is opportunity. So today we're talking about opportunities, but do me a huge favor. If you're checking us out on Periscope, go ahead and share the stream uh, and invite your followers. If you're checking us out on YouTube, do the same thing. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, then uh, grab the link for today's show. Share it on your favorite social media platform, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you like to share things. Uh, go ahead and share that link for me. Uh, and then for my Facebook family, go ahead and do the same thing. If you have not already uh, uh, liked the Financial Health Mentor fan page, then go ahead and hit the like button so you get notifications when we go live every morning. And then go ahead and share the show uh, for our friends uh, who normally tune in but maybe didn't get the notice all last week when I said the show was moving over to the actual fan page. Uh, if you're new to the show, I'd like to let you know exactly who the show is for. This show is for risers and grinders only, man. If you're ready to get up, get out and get something today, <clears throat> excuse me, this show is for you. This show is for legacy builders. You've got to be about building a legacy. One generation has to stop all the foolery and go ahead and make some tough sacrifices so the next generation doesn't have to. And I believe that our ancestors uh, made their fight for our physical freedom outside of slavery. Then our uh, 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 ancestors after them made uh, their fight and made their sacrifice for civil rights. I think now the final frontier for black folk is economic freedom. And that's where I'm staking my uh, 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 battle tank. I'm positioning myself to help us fight for economic freedom. If that's you, then this is your show. I'm willing to sacrifice today so that my children's children won't have to. So if you're about building a legacy, see is this is your show. On the other hand, who is the show not for? The show is not for the eternal pessimist, right? If you got a problem for every solution, this ain't your show, man. The show is not for the person who, uh, who literally, I mean literally, just, just is waiting on a hand out instead of a hand up. See, I'm all for a hand up, but I'm not for a hand out. Welfare is just not my thing. I'm just not not keen on it. Now, now that's funny coming from a guy who was raised by a single mom on welfare, right? But my mom was in, uh, intelligent and, and extremely bright, so she didn't have to be on welfare. So I don't believe in a hand out 
uh, as much as I do in a hand up. So if you're looking for a handout, this ain't your show, man, because we're not here to tell you how to get a handout. We're here to tell you how to accept a hand up and let ne not, not let ego get in your way and surround yourself with people who are willing to help push, pride, and promote you to the next level. And like I tell you each and every morning, I have no problem with you not wanting to be wealthy. My only problem with you is... Uh, when you have a problem with me wanting to be wealthy, don't let my aspirations rub you the wrong way. So if you're not here to learn how to build wealth, if you're here to uh, cause problems or to be nosy, you can exit stage left. If you've never seen a future billionaire before, I want you to take a screenshot Jeez. and watch your boy work because it's going down 2027. 20, so today, a lot of the content uh, that, that we're going to talk about when it comes to opportunity comes from this book right here. This is my man, George C. Frazier. I got a chance to meet the brother. Uh, and he is uh, every bit as dynamic in person as he is uh, on video and in the books that he's write, uh, written. He's got tons of best-selling uh, uh, material. Uh, the Frasier Networking Conference is one of the biggest conferences for networking uh, throughout the world. But the book is Race for Success, right? And he's talking about the 10 best opportunities for blacks in America. And I thought I'd go over those with you uh, because, again, this whole notion for this show came to me last night when I was watching uh, a little bit of power before I dozed off and I heard Go say, the only antidote for poverty is opportunity. And I believe him wholeheartedly. The only antidote for poverty is opportunity. And I, I think that sometimes uh, too many black people uh, use the lack of opportunities as a crutch. We use the lack of opportunity as a crutch. And I will tell you, uh, I don't care where you are, man, and, and how bad the situation may appear to be, there is no such thing as a lack of opportunity. There is no such thing as a lack of opportunity. What we tend to struggle with because of, uh, of our, the way we've been programmed is a lack of imagination and a lack of creativity. There's no shortage of opportunity. I don't care what situation you're in and how dire it may seem, there is opportunity all around us all the time. But I get that we've been programmed in a way that we can't even see opportunities. We have allowed uh, this system to literally dwarf or diminish our creative spirit, and 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 that's hard to do, man. So that tells you how how beat down uh, a lot of us are when you are the child of the creator, not the child of a creator. You're the child of the creator, and to not have creative juices flowing through your veins. Uh, that just means this system has really beat you down and we've got to fix that. But we are the most creative and ingenuous, uh, 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 ingenious people on the planet. Problem is, we, we've, we've allowed this system of oppression to literally quench our creativity. So there's no shortage of opportunity. There's a shortage of uh, uh, creativity and imagination. So again, the book comes, uh, the, most of the content today is coming from Race for Success by George C. Frazier. Race for Success by George C. Frazier. The 10 best business opportunities for blacks in America. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over those 10 and then I'm going to talk about four things that you could do to uh, start to recognize opportunities more. So I'm going to start from number 10 uh, going on down. Uh, number 10 is global e-commerce or global commerce. We have to start looking at what the internet has done for us, y'all. It has given us a global reach. It has given us a global reach. And, 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 and I, I think one of the things that... that one of the reasons that entertainment is 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 before us through all of our uh, social medias and all of that kind of stuff, it keeps us distracted from the real uh, uh, power of this tool that we know now as the internet, right? The the internet gives us a global reach, so you start looking at global commerce, and 
I had a brother reach out to me not long ago. He says, I'm from the States, brother, but I moved down to Columbia. And he's talking about potentially partnering with me and some things that we're doing. He said, brother, I've got access to the very same coffee that Starbucks is charging an arm and a leg for. And what they charge you for a single cup, I can probably get you two pounds of it. Now, how did me and this brother connect? Through the internet through the internet, right? So we have to look at our opportunities for black people in America. One of the, the, the best places to look for opportunities, we could look globally, we could look abroad. I, I have to go get my passport so I can start doing some traveling abroad, right? And believe it or not, your man, is, as learned as I am, have never been out of the country. So I've got, that's one of the things that I'm building so hard for is so that I can stabilize my financial situation to the point where I probably, I, I, I'll be like that couple who literally has no home. They live in hotels. They travel the world and live from, live in, in, from hotel to hotel. And they found that it was actually cheaper to do that uh, while it, it cost them about the same amount as a mortgage to um, travel to some nice hotels and the airfare that it cost them to bounce around uh, from, from, from city to city and, and continent to continent, it costs about the same as a mortgage. But they get so much more of an experience because they're soaking up knowledge from all these different cultures. So number 10, we're talking about seeking opportunities. It's okay to seek opportunities abroad. The, the uh, 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 internet has given us a global reach. It's given us a global reach so you can seek opportunities abroad. Uh, a number nine, and, and, and this is, I want you guys to know something about this book right here because I'm gonna, I'm gonna give some, some examples and some, give some things for you to point to so, you, so that you can really pay attention. The book itself was published in 1998. 1998. Now, I want you to understand that when you have things like this in your head, go ahead and get them out there. And it may, not, it may take a while to catch on, but this book was published in 1998. And you'll see why I'm saying that in a second when I start to give some of these examples, right? Number nine, the, the, uh, another place for black people to look for opportunity is in entertainment. We're talking about where to find opportunity. Number nine, entertainment. Now, I know what you're saying. H. Cortez, we've been entertaining all our freaking lives, all our existence. But that's, where, that's not where the opportunity is. When, when you think entertainment, I want you to now think ownership, and I want you to think uh, Oprah. I want you to think Jay-Z. I want you to think Diddy. See, these, 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 these pioneers in the field of entertainment have started to realize that the real money is not in entertaining. The real money is in owning entertainment. You guys get that? You follow me? The real money is not in entertaining. The real money is in owning entertainment. See, 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 we're looking at Jay-Z, and, and believe it or not, man, some people are having an uh, issue with Jay-Z coming to the uh, uh, forefront and, and now speaking about black economics, right? But what I want you to understand, he's just now speaking about it in his lyrics and publicly, but he's been showing us black economics his entire career, Yeah, he wrote the blueprint on how to, uh, one, two, and three, on how to live and exist in the streets and all of that stuff, but he's been showing us the blueprint to become a billionaire his entire career. See, the last thing, I, I not the last thing, but one of the first things I posted on the whole subject of Jay-Z on, on this very fan page, if you want to go back and look at some of the old posts that I put up about Jay-Z, I said, I stopped listening to Jay-Z, the rapper, about 10 years ago. But that was the same point that I started studying Sean Carter, the entrepreneur. Because I started realizing the brother is using his platform to show us how things are done. He wasn't talking about 
how to do things. He was showing us when he tried to get a record deal and nobody signed them, he, he partnered up with some of his buddies, created their own record label, and they entered the game with ownership. So number nine is entertainment. We should look at other places for, enter, we should look at entertainment, not as in the entertaining. It's time for us to go to the next level. Kevin Hart is another great example. Kevin Hart spent $5 million to do Laugh at My Pain. Laugh at My Pain generated over $100 million worldwide. And this was six months ago. I don't know what the numbers are now. He spent his own money, right? Laugh at Dame Dash all you want to, but Dame Dash said to be a boss, you got to put up your own dough. Kevin Hart said, wait a minute. I've had three, four, five of these uh, 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 stand-up movies done and I'm looking around and I'm seeing what the people who are producing the movies are doing and it don't look like it costs a whole lot to do this <laughs> but I'm looking at the money that's being generated and I'm looking at my small portion of that said, hold on wait a minute so if I'm looking around and I see that it's not costing a whole lot to get it done but they're turning around and making tens of millions after only spending a couple I got, I got a few million I can put up behind my own project. So we have to start looking at the ownership side of entertainment for opportunities. Number eight. Now, I want you to keep in mind, this book was written in 1998. Right? Could Jay-Z have uh, read this book in 98? See, you, see we, we, we look at people and... And if they're not talking black power 24-7, we assume they're not conscious. Floyd Mayweather is another one. Exactly. Floyd Mayweather had to give money back to Bob Arum to say, you know what? Release me. Cut me loose, man. I don't need you as my promoter. My mouth is big enough for me to promote my damn self. Oops. I ain't supposed to be cussing. It's damn really a cuss word. My wife said, I better stop cussing on the show because my pastor might be watching. <laughs> but that's a, that's a good example. He had to give money back to cut ties. Jay-Z had to bought his last album from his label for $5 million to go ahead and jumpstart. See, he would have been under contract for another year or so, not just because he owed them another album, but he also had to do the promo and the, the touring for that album. He said, you know what? What y'all think y'all going to make on this album? What, 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 what can I give y'all to make to, to get this back, man? Like, go ahead and cut ties, man, because I'm ready to start doing some bigger and better things. They slid him a piece of paper with a number on it. That number was $5 million. I'm sure it wasn't $5 million. It was probably some other numbers, but they negotiated down to $5 million. Wrote them folks a check. Let me get out from under this contract. Let me start doing my own thing. Let me own my own self. Right? Title is another one of those things. He owns entertainment. He's not just entertaining now. He owns entertainment. Right? Next thing, sports. Sports. Now, I know what you're saying. Here again, H. Cortez. We've been playing sports our entire lives. You're absolutely right. But look at brothers like Ice Cube and Master P. That three-on-three -three thing that Ice Cube got going on, yeah, that's owning sports. That's not playing sports. It's a difference, right? Master P has got a co-ed league going the same way. You can go buy you a team. They, they're starting to get, get, get sponsorship and all of that. With, 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 with Ice Cube, you can go buy you a team, own you a franchise, got a little bread, and that thing is phenomenal because he's got all former NBA and, and, and top college players playing in the league. It's time to start owning entertainment. You know how I plan to own me a little bit of entertainment? One of, the, one of, my, my, one of my things that I'm going to get into uh, early on in my real estate career is real estate development. I'm going to start buying up blocks and building small arenas. Small three to five, two to five thousand seat arenas, right? Little small, 
little places you can come in and, and the state basketball tournaments can have their turn their, their their state basketball tournament in these little arenas but they're right in our community and then around these arenas i'm going to build uh black wall street so when you have three to five thousand people fall out of an arena and all everywhere that they go is in black owned establishments right the hotel in the arena will be Thornton Inn, right? Thornton Plaza, Thornton Plaza and Convention Center, right? So that's one of the things that you can do to start owning a piece of entertainment. Then uh, uh, Ice Cube will have a place to bring his three-on-three -three sports league as they start to travel, right? Maybe I own me a three-on-three -three sports team and that'll be our home facility. I'm just saying you can own a piece of entertainment when you start thinking outside the box. When you start re, re, when you when you start reminding yourself that you're a child of your creator, so you can create for yourself, right? So what we're doing is, uh, if you haven't already shared the stream, if you just popped on, go ahead and share the stream for me. What we're doing is we're talking about uh, the book, uh, uh, the, the the list of the ten best. Uh, business opportunities for blacks in America. Uh, it's called Race for Success uh, uh, by Joy C. Frazier. Race for Success by Joy C. Frazier. Uh, and he's, he he gave a list of the ten best black uh, best black ten best business opportunities for blacks in America. Right. So we're on number eight sports. Master P. Now now here's a, the funny thing. I got a clip that I'm gonna put up later today about Master P. Master P said. When I entered the industry, I entered the industry with full ownership of all my masters. I didn't go out and get a record deal. I went out and got a distribution deal. And even when they wanted to distribute my music, they I told them that you're only going to get 15% and I'm taking 85%. Now, everybody saw what Master P did in the industry, he said, to this day, not a single person in hip hop has ever come to ask him to be their mentor. I want y'all to get what I just said. Everybody saw what Master P did. Master P owns all of his music. When the establishment wanted to get a piece of Master P, he said, I only need you for distribution. I don't need you to market. I don't need you to promote. I don't need you for none of that stuff. So why I'm going to give you a lion's share of the check? In fact, I don't need you for distribution. What I can do is I'm going to take these tanks and me and my crew, we're going to split up and we're going to go distribute our own music. And he said, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, well, let us help you do that better. He said, okay, you can help us distribute, but guess what? You still ain't getting but 15%. And they knew that 15% of hundreds of millions was better than 0% of nothing. So they took the 15%. And to this day, not a single person in hip hop has ever asked Master P how he did it or can he mentor them. Man, I'd have dropped 100 stacks, 200 stacks, a million, whatever, just to get that brother locked up in a room. Are you kidding me? Bro, here's a million. Give me eight hours, man, and we just going to turn on a, a video camera and we going to go in, man, and give us the game. And I'd be studying that, that game right now. I'd be studying that, that, that film right now today. See, some of y'all are smart enough to go back and extract some of these videos that I do and you're able to download them and you're able to hold on to them because guess what? When I get to my 300th episode, I'm taking all of this stuff down off the internet, putting it all into my own private site, and you're going to have to pay for it to get it. Yep. Yep. That's the game plan. So y'all better get it, hold it, grab it, pull it on to your own databases, go to uh, iTunes, download the podcast so you can own it while it's free. See, a lot of people say, H. Cortez, you give up too much game for free, man. You should be charging for that. 
Yeah, I've got a little bit of blueprint that I'm working on. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I want to pour into my people. Uh, but it won't be long before I stop giving this game up for free. You can trust and believe that. So, sports. Look at what Ice Cube is doing with ownership of sports. Right? He didn't beg to go buy into the NFL or our NBA. He didn't beg to go buy. He, he, he didn't beg to go buy a team and and jump through all those hoops that you got to jump through to buy an NBA team because that's a good old boys network. He said, "Okay, we go create a league of my own, man. Create a league of my own. Sports, not playing sports, but how do you own sports, right? Number seven, healthcare. Healthcare. I want you to. I want." I keep going back to the book and the date that it's published because I want y'all to understand that somebody got it. Somebody got it. When we talk about health care, how many black people do you know? Give me a uh, uh, type home health in the uh, chat right now. If you know somebody who owns their own in-home health care agency right now, a brother or a sister. See, somebody got it. They said, wait a minute, there's an opportunity here to own something and they looked at healthcare and they said, wait a minute, I can own my own home health care agency? Type home health care in the chat if you know somebody who owns their own home health care agency, a brother or a sister. I know brothers and sisters who are doing the home health care agency here in St. Louis and they're doing it big. Because they saw an opportunity, they said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's an opportunity. Home, uh, what do you say? Home health, caring hearts owned. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm. Th that's an opportunity in healthcare that you got to take advantage of the opportunities when you see them, right? Obamacare created a lot of opportunity. And what? What, what the, 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 the mainstream and what solid business people do, they don't care if they're for it or if they're against it. They're saying, what opportunities will this create for me as a business owner in the healthcare space? They said, it looks like it's going to pass. Oh, we've got an opportunity. We're going to pounce on this opportunity as soon as it passes. They said, oh, it looks like it's going to fail. If it fails, it's going to create these opportunities over here. We've got a game plan ready to go either direction. Now they're saying, oh, uh, Donald Trump is trying to repeal it and pull it back. We got a game plan. If he peels it back, what kind of opportunities is that going to create? And they're game planning and strategizing. They're in their war rooms right now. If, I, if Donald Trump gets his way and repeals this whole thing, what kind of opportunities will that create? And let's be the first, the only, and the best to provide a service that's going to take advantage of those opportunities. Are you studying to see what opportunities are around? We're going to talk about four ways to identify opportunities. Let me rush through these 10 real quick. Number six, urban redevelopment. Urban redevelopment. We keep crying about gentrification like we can't do nothing about that. That's the funniest thing ever to me. We keep crying about gentrification as if we can't do anything about that. If you don't want others to gentrify your neighborhoods, then gentrify them yourself. I'm going to run that back. If you don't want others to gentrify your neighborhood, gentrify them yourself. We live right across the street from that row of abandoned buildings, those abandoned apartments, and, and that abandoned school. And the minute somebody else comes in and owns it, fixes it up, raises the rent, increases the property value, now we, we complain it. Jigga, you sat across from that, that wreck your whole life. And you ain't think to rub two nickels together with your neighbor to buy it, fix it up, so you can keep ownership of your own neighborhood? Get out of here with that. 
that phony concern. If you was that concerned, you'd have bought that business or burnt it down when that little girl got raped in there. Get out of here. Right? Because we all know those buildings were in the hood that turned into trap houses, that turned into everything else and all of this, man. Get out of here with that. With that, that phony concern. You ain't concerned. You've been running drills, got these abandoned buildings all, all through your community, and then when somebody else comes and buys them, kicks those people out, cleans up your neighborhood, now you mad. Now you mad. Get, get out of here with that. So urban redevelopment, there's opportunities all over the place for urban redevelopment. All over the place. Buy some of these abandoned buildings. If they won't sell them to you, then create a property management company and start managing them and say, hey, man, this building is uh, abandoned. I talked to the politicians in the local community, and guess what? They're getting ready to tear this thing down. Let me manage it. Let me get you some tenants in here for a certain percentage of the monthly rent, and let's get this thing back on and popping. You kidding me? Tons of tons, tons and tons of, of opportunity there. Number five, media and publishing. Number five, media and publishing. Yeah, this is not in, in Cincinnati universities or in the hood uh, area where, yeah, buildings are dirt cheap. We're grabbing up. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We, we have Washington University here uh, in St. Louis, and we also have St. Louis University. Washington University has bought almost everything in a 10 mile square, a 10 square mile radius. St. Louis U has done the same thing. And in fact, the last thing that St. Louis U is, is looking to buy is Harris Stowe, which is a historically black college that, that's, that's now embedded inside St. Louis University's campus because they bought everything else around Harris Stowe. So now it looks like Harris Stowe is embedded in St. Louis University campus. It's crazy. It's crazy. But media and publishing, guys. See, some of you guys don't consider what I'm doing media. Some of you guys don't consider what I'm doing media. But this is where media starts. Go back to watch some, some of the early Oprah Winfrey stuff. And look at her now. See, when I fully unveil my media plan, that's going to make these little uh, webcam shows, these 300 episodes, 200, what I'm on, 251 episodes, that's going to make these things even more powerful, even more valuable. Because I told you, I'm, strip, I'm scrubbing all of this stuff now, and it's going into the vault. And then every so often, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a Disney on y'all. Every so often, every 10 years or so, I'm going to pull out one of the, the, the most popular episodes, clean it up, redigitize it, and all of that. You know, like Disney pulls out The Lion King every 25 years. They might pull out Beauty and the Beast every 10 years. They might pull out uh, uh, The Snow White and Seven Dwarfs every eight years or so, and they just regurgitate repurpose the same content, introduce it to a brand new audience of kids, and starts that cycle all over again. It starts that cycle all over again. So if y'all are afraid to put a camera in front of your face and start your own media companies, if you have not written a book about something that you know how to do very well, what the heck are you waiting on? I'm on my third book now. And again, the books right now aren't selling a whole lot of copies because I ain't famous yet. But watch when I unveil my entire media plan and I become a billionaire by 2027. You think everybody's not going to go back and buy those first couple books and they become a, 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 a New York Times bestsellers? Abs of Regan Lutley. So... Monetize My Life Academy, I will be dropping in the, uh, uh, the uh, publishing course uh, within the next week or two, but go ahead and 
and subscribe. Right now, you can get the membership for $50 off. It's $97 a month, but right now, you can get it through Labor Day. You can get it for $47 a month. And I'll have a course in there within the next week or so that teaches you how to self-publish. Then the course, the other course is to teach you how to self-publish. We'll teach you how to brand, market, how to promote, sell, and distribute the book. Come on now. You don't get all that for $50 a month. Nowhere else. Right? I'm giving up the game still, even at $50 a month. That's a steal. Right? So media and publishing. I, I would caution you this, though. Most people, when they want to write their first book, they always want to write their biography. Don't write your biography first because nobody knows you. And, and, and this may sound harsh, but I don't mean it to sound harsh. Nobody cares about your story. Not right now. But you continue to do your thing and become uber successful, then your story becomes important. So don't write your biography first. Write a little how-to book, even if it's an e-book. The, the, uh, 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 books today are like a new business card. Everybody's got a book. If you don't got a book, then huh, everybody's doing a book. I, I mean... I can go, if I were to reach out and just put my hands, just to give you an example, if I can reach out and just put my hand just on a few, just, just in hand, within arm's reach, right, that I can just put my hands on really quickly, and you will start to see that... Um, this is mine, of course, Monetize My Life. It will teach you how to transform any passion into profit, right? Um, this is another young lady's, uh, uh, Lisa Puerto, Puerto uh, Real Estate 101, self-published, small little book. This is Evan Jefferson's, uh, The Black Billionaires Club, right? How they, how they built their wealth, right? This right here is uh, Andre Hatchett's. Oh, I'm putting these on my keyboard. I'm like, what's, why is that popping up? Right, this right here is Andre Hatchett's Own or Be Owned. Um, let me just show you guys some more real quick. See, the, the book is like, like the new business card. Hold your horses, hold your horses. Hold your horses. Yep. All right. This is my first one. Financial health traffic report. Told you I got two. I'm working on the third on credit. Uh, Anitra's Montgomery, uh, 30 days to life. Right. Uh, my man, Dr. Boyce Watkins, uh, Black American Money. Right. My girl, Yvette D. Best. Right. Maximizing your refund. If you don't have this one and you're in the business, then you're missing out. I also have our other ebook, uh, uh, the benefits of becoming an LLC. So, yeah, so so most of these books, you can get them at books.financialhealthmentor.com. 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 Oh, yeah, I've got Mikey's book around here somewhere. Um, I mean, I got a ton. I, I, every time somebody writes a book, yep, yeah, here's Mikey's right here. Right? Here's Mikey. Um, here's another young author, Christian The Truth Jones, The Win Within. Right? He's another, uh, he's another 10 year old author. Uh, speaks around the country, shares the stage with uh, Les Brown and, and people like that. Trevor Eyes with the black CEO uh, over in London with his mom. Uh, amazing, man. So, so publishing and media is another opportunity that blacks should be looking into, man. Right? I have another media company called All Amateur Sports Network. And that, that and, and I do a lot of coverage of local sports here in, in the St. Louis area. Right? Media, it, I mean, come on, it don't take nothing. Right now, cell phone cameras have 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 have, have evolved to the place where they're starting to record in four and in four K now. Are you kidding me? So why not put a camera out, get you a little show, build you a little little brand, and come on, I can show you guys how to do all that. Monetize my life academy. 
right? Number four, technology. Number four, technology. I probably should have made this a two-part show. <laughs> Number four, technology. Right? And again, it's time for us to start thinking about owning technology and not just using technology. See, if, if nobody else does this, then I might have to be the first one to send a satellite up to the sky. Damn piggybacking off somebody else's uh, satellite. If, if, if telecommunications requires a satellite to be shot off into the sky that you own and, and put in orbit, then heck, I got to figure out how to put a satellite in the sky. Because Charter is killing me, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, Sprint is killing me. If I need to build some towers and send a satellite in the sky, why aren't we thinking about this? These are opportunities for us. Not just using technology. Yes, leveraging technology to build wealth, absolutely. Like I'm leveraging uh, YouTube and, and Facebook to, to build a brand, right? But at some point, we got to build our own YouTube and Facebook and, 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 and Periscope and Twitter and all of that kind of stuff, right? I want you to think about something. And, and I'm going to give you a little bit of game. I'm going to give you a little bit of game. Here's why Monetize My Life Academy exists. You guys remember the gold rush? Late 1800s? The gold rush. Everybody fled out to California when they started first finding those veins of gold. You guys remember the gold rush. And I, when I want you to think about something when it comes to technology. And this is what everybody else has figured out. And this is what we've got to figure out. What do you think about this? When there was two people... Two, two, two entities that, two types of people that made money during the gold rush. There were the few people who actually struck gold. There were the few. And then there were the thousands of companies who sold the tools to those people who were panning and mining and searching for gold. Y'all get that? There's two types of people that made money during the gold rush there was a few people who actually struck gold then there were the thousands of companies that created the the products and the tools that were required to seek out the gold some of them still exist today some of the tool makers of today started back then we know Levi's started back then. That's when denim was first created and introduced to the workforce during the gold rush. 200 years later, they still, they, they're still here. They're still here. Right? Why is it that we have a generation after generation after generation of, of wannabe rappers want to be singers, want to be actors and dancers, right? We have all of these people seeking gold and a few of them will find them. Right situation is going to come along, the right person is going to come on, right network, all that, and they're going to make it up to, to, to make a stardom. But while everybody else is trying to get there, what are they buying to get there? They're buying microphones, they're buying headphones, they're buying... Uh, uh, drum machines, they're buying uh, uh, mixing boards, they're buying uh, 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 plastic uh, windows to, to build studios. And, and why aren't we producing any of that stuff? I don't have a problem with the Sony camera, but if the Sony camera records all of the footage to be displayed on the movie screen and a lot of our actors and actresses or in films and movies, why isn't anybody building a recording device so that we can own a piece of that? Right? I'm just saying, technology, we've got to start thinking about technology. Number three, small business development. Number three, small business development. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save the four things that you can do to, to, to look for, uh, to, 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 to identify opportunity. I'm going to save that for tomorrow. So we'll just finish up the, the 10 things and then we'll do part two tomorrow. Part two tomorrow, I'll give you the, the, the ways to uh, identify um, 
because we're almost done and I still got three more to go. Small business development, right? I'm, I, I say this all the time and, and I don't mind feeling like a broken record because what, what media has, has done for years is they understand one truth and that is this. If you tell a lie loud enough and long enough, it becomes truth. Well, guess what? If you tell the truth loud enough and long enough, it also becomes truth. <laughs> so the truth is, in America, America is a corporation. The primary language of America is capitalism. If you don't have a business in America, you're a foreigner in your own country. If you don't have a business in America, America is business. The primary language of America is capitalism. If you don't have a business in America, you are a foreigner in your own country. So now that people are starting to wake up to entrepreneurship, and uh, all of these solopreneurs are budding, then small business development creates a niche market. So if you have run a successful business for any amount of years, then you have a value in the marketplace. For all of these uh, small businesses who need development, you can coach them along and getting their businesses developed. Small business development is number three. Number two, finance and banking. Finance and banking. The financial services industry is $4 trillion big, and that's just in America alone. $11 trillion worldwide, $4 trillion in America alone. You guys get that? How much of $4 trillion do you need to carve out a little piece of heaven for yourself right here on earth. Four trillion. Let me give you an idea of how much four trillion actually is. If I gave you a million dollars an hour, 24-7, 365, it'll take me over 500 years to give you four trillion dollars. A million dollars a year, I mean a million dollars an hour, 24-7, 365. It takes me 500 years to give you $4 trillion. That's how much, how vast this industry is. And guess what? People out here are hurting. So you can join the Black Wealth Movement. We can put you in your own financial education franchise and teach you wealth building principles and strategies. You use them in your life to get the results so that now you're not a hypocrite when you're out here teaching financial principles and strategies. Then you can join Monetize My Life Academy. We can teach you how to build a brand around your financial education franchise, and you can get you a piece of that four trillion. That's what we do. That's what we do. Get you a piece of that four trillion. Yeah. Get you a piece of it. It's, it's not hard. Then if you want to add a certification on that, go become a certified financial educator. Then you want to add some license on that, go get you some uh, insurance license. Go get you a Series 6, Series 63, uh, all those other licenses to sell financial instruments. There's opportunities all around us. Tomorrow we're going to talk about how to seek those opportunities, how to, how to find them, how to identify them. Right, but these are the areas that you should be right. Four trillion dollars worth of gain for thirty-five dollars a month. Absolutely right, Lawrence. And we'll pay it forward for you and bring your startup cost down to ten dollars. You can't beat that. Right? So finance and banking or the financial services industry is number two. Number one, education and training. Education and training is the number one uh, area that many black people can find opportunity in if they knew how. Education and training. 
See, see, a, a lot of us are starting to get wind of the fact that those who make the real money in any industry are those who are highly specialized. Who makes more money, the brain surgeon or the general practitioner? Right? Those who are highly specialized. So now that people are starting to understand that, then people are seeking out opportunities to drill down and get education in very highly targeted, highly focused areas. And if you are those, one of those educators, right, you know how to do something real well because you've done it successfully for ages. Most of us have done something successfully for 20, 30 years, either on our job, with a, a, a passion or a hobby that we just like to dibble and dabble in, uh, way we raise our children, it, to everywhere, everybody is an expert in at least one thing. And guess what? There are millions of people who are trying to become an expert in that one thing that you know very well. And if you would just position yourself to teach it to them, they'll pay you for it. Y'all need me to run that back? Everybody on this planet is an expert in at least one thing. There are millions of people around the world trying to become an expert in the one thing that you know very well. If you would but only put yourself in position to teach it to them, they pay you for it. Ask me how I know. You guys ask all the time, man, where do you get all this information from? A lot of it, I bought it. I bought it. I have no problem paying for courses, seminars, uh, training, mentorship. I bought it. All of these books, I bought these books. Because I understand that if I can fill my head with knowledge, then I can later empty my head and earn profit from the knowledge that I have. See, some of you guys say you want to be great at something, but you're lying to yourself. Some of you say you want to be great at things, but you're lying to yourself. You know how I know you're lying to yourself? Because you're not investing in the thing that will get you to be great at that thing. That's in you. Number one reason people don't invest in themselves is because they don't value themselves. The number one reason people do not invest in themselves is because they don't value themselves. You invest in the things that you have, you see value in. You invest in the things. John says, thanks for the, uh, the confirmation. Hey, man, just working with what God gave me, brother. God gave me a big old mouth. So just working it. <laughs> the number one reason people don't invest in themselves is because they don't value themselves. I had a buddy, uh, Andre Polk, back in uh, high school. And, and he and I spent a lot of time together, you know, my junior year, his senior year. And that summer after he graduated, we were just, you, you know, we just rolled together. We just hung out. And he had this little car. I don't even know what kind of car it was. Um, but it wasn't fancy. It wasn't late model. But this was, this was in the, the early 90s. And this car had to be a 70-something, right? But when I say he valued the car... We, we were the type that, you know, like everybody has in their city, the place that you go on Sundays to go when you're young and you go hang out. Dude's car would be so clean. And I would be saying to myself, man, why you put so much time and effort into cleaning this little bucket, this little hoop? That's what I'm thinking to myself. 
but because he valued it. Right? Those things that you value, you invest in. So he invested in the car wash. He invested in the $30 chamois. He invested in the tire shine. He invested in the smell good to put into his bucket because he valued it. I didn't value it. I didn't have a car. I didn't understand the value of having a decently clean car. I didn't, so I didn't value it. So I would not have invested in a hoopie. You got to get to a place where you see value in you and you start investing to increase that value over time. Because that's my biggest thing. How can I make myself more and more valuable to the marketplace? That's why I'm always sourcing out and seeking out knowledge. Exactly right. When a man doesn't understand the value of a thing, he abuses it. Kimberly McLean. And, and that's what we do to ourselves. We abuse ourselves because we don't understand the value in us. So real quick, let me recap the 10 things. And then tomorrow, I'm going to give you uh, some strategies on how to identify opportunities, right? Global commerce. Number 10. Number nine, entertainment, not in entertaining, but in owning entertainment. Number eight, sports, not in playing sports, but in owning sports. Seven, uh, uh, health care. Six, urban redevelopment. Five, media and publishing. Four, technology. Three, small business development. Two, finance and banking. Three, education. Brother uh, Frazier wrote this book in 1998, almost 20 years ago. You look at the people who jumped in these industries that he was predicting that would be the best opportunities for black people, and they went in right now. And they went in right now. Well, guess what? Hop into these same industries, and I think you're going to be able to win for another 20 years. Now, 20 years from now, you might need to write a new book. But hop into these same industries today, and I think you'll win for at least another 20 years. You got to get in. I'm Ace Cortez, financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Go out and grab your free ebook at monetizemylifeacademy.com. And uh, if you want to subscribe, uh, if you want to go ahead and get a subscription, you can do so for just $47 per month. Just inbox me and I'll send you the special coupon code that you need. Uh, if you have already bought uh, a pre order uh, my book, uh, Monetize My Life, and I have not contacted you to give you your three free months uh, pass to that site, let me know and I will send that information over to you. You do have to go register. You do have to put your credit card in, but you pay nothing for three months. I will send you a notification when your subscription is about to end. So if you don't want to pay for it, you don't have to, but I want to give you your three free months. I promise you for pre-ordering the book and showing your love and support. So until I talk to you guys tomorrow where we do part two of this show. I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. Peace out, y'all.